Welcome again. This is Musashi, and today we're looking at smoke. I got a home no, not the smoke them if you got them type of smoke. When soldiers would stand around and smoke cigarettes, we're talking about tactical smoke. There is a large number of applications for smoke in the military. Actually, it's an amazing amount of stuff uh, that this thing can do. It's a very underappreciated force multiplier. Ever heard of millimeter wave radar? Well, there's some smoke that can obscure you from that too. For those of us who love armored warfare, the game has implemented smoke grenades on many of the vehicles as a module upgrade. But I don't think we've scratched the surface on the fun to be had with the smoke features in armored warfare. We haven't had enough vehicles that have had access to it in the, f in the first uh, early access, and we're about to have that in early access too. But more than that, as the game matures, there are lots of different kinds of smoke and smoke applications, including some of the artillery rounds that we, uh, specialty rounds we may be seeing. So let's take a look at some of the common smoke rounds. This is the ubiquitous M18 smoke grenade. If you've ever been in the military, you've seen this, used it, or, well, I don't know if you've used it, but I've used a lot of them. But uh, frontline troops uh, see a lot of these things because they're used for so many different things. Uh, there's four different colors of them. There's uh, yellow, red, violet, and green. These things have been around for a long time. They're uh, sort of a mousetrap system where you pull that pin and then you hold on to that thing on the side, that little metal thing, and then it goes bloop and it flips off of there and it makes an incredible amount of smoke. We use these things uh, at National Training Center for all sorts of stuff. Uh, I remember one time we went to go pick up uh, Hoffman's, the, uh, you know, these explosive devices we would use to simulate main gun rounds, and there'd be sort of a, an ammunition depot, and there were just hundreds, if not thousands of these things piled up, because we were blowing off M18 smoke grenades like they were going out of style on those force rotations we were doing. So I got to see and use a lot of these things. Now I won't mention any names, but one time I was on leave from the military and a friend of mine brought back one of these M18 uh, smoke grenades and launched it down the middle of our local neighborhood street. And uh, yeah, that wasn't such a good idea. Uh, and so to give you a feeling for that, let's take a look at uh, this one of these guys on the internet who's looking at the M18 grenade here. This guy's dressed up like some kind of Russian commando or something, but the point of watching this is to see how thick this smoke is. And you can see, you can't see the guy at all behind there, right? Uh, and it is quite effective for obscuring vehicles and personnel behind these. This is just one grenade that's going off, so imagine if you throw multiple uh, of these grenades in one area. Of course, from armored warfare, we don't care about infantry guys doing this. We care about our vehicles doing it. Of course, as most people know, there's multiple smoke launchers on vehicles. Uh, sometimes it's a two, two by four or a two by six arrangement on the vehicles. Uh, sometimes it's, um, uh, or actually the Leclerc has a two by nine. They have a ton of smoke grenades on the Leclerc. But before we get to the vehicle systems, let's talk about one of the more basic things uh, that vehicles have access to that's very low tech and been around for a long time. It's the uh, vehicle exhaust smoke systems. That's a real fancy name for it. You let some oil drip on your hot manifold and it just makes smoke outside the back of your tank. This is a T-72 Vismod. This is what I was driving around at uh, NTC. These were our Sheridans that were mocked up so we look like the enemy. We look like Russians. Uh, so what you do in these large engagements is we'd have just, we'd be on, on, a, on an offense, we would be just piling through these defilades and with lots of tanks screaming behind each other. This was one of the main engagement areas we would do out at NTC. This is actually um, one of the primary places we'd have force on force engagements. And we would, I, I many times have gone through that little patch. It's actually quite large. The picture doesn't make it look that way. But we would pile through there and all the tanks would have their smoke generators on. Uh, and so the smoke comes out of the back of your tank through this oil dripping on the, the hot manifold part of your tank. It's super low tech, but it produces an incredible amount of smoke and it's continuous. You just flip a switch in your tank and away it goes. It takes an amazingly small amount of oil to actually make a, a lot of billowing smoke in this method. So it's not like you need extra oil canisters to do it. As you can see here on the M113, you can make an amazing amount of smoke from this system. It's just incredible. And this is just one vehicle. Of course, you got lots of vehicles doing this at the same time. You can really obscure a, from visual sight a lot of tanks at one time. This vehicle exhaust system uh, method is extremely effective but very old school. It only can obscure visual, the visual wavelength, you know, stuff you can see. 
But with the advent of thermal imaging, laser range finders, there, there's another uh, wavelength that smoke can protect you from. But not this low-tech smoke that's being produced in this way. And that is where the smoke grenades come in. But here you can see the M1s were also, and still are, capable of doing the exhaust system smoke. You know, the Leopard 2 originally was not designed to have it, and it's hard, it's, it's very cost effective. It's not, it's not difficult or a high-tech thing to put into a tank. So not allowing a vehicle to do this exhaust, even though it's the low-tech old-school version, is just frankly a mistake. The regular exhaust system smoke is effective in a number of areas. You can even use it for your individual tank if you sort of have a sense for where the wind's blowing. Here's a video that's going to show how effective that is. And there he does that again. You can imagine on the battlefield that's going to be tremendously effective to see how that high the tank as it goes around. <laughs> Go. Pretty cool, right? But again, it does not obscure you from thermal imaging at all. This is the smoke grenade launcher for the T90. Uh, the, the smoke grenades are allowed, to, or the, the grenade itself has the capability of hiding you from visual as well as infrared uh, targeting systems. These grenade launchers are becoming more and more popular, and you're starting to see the number of them multiply. So in armored warfare, it'll be interesting to watch. Uh, you know, or count how many grenade launchers you've got. Here's the M1's grenade launcher. Uh, you see that little rope around it there? Yeah, that's kind of what we did with our grenade launchers. Not a whole lot. Uh, typically, that little the holder for the grenade launcher there, uh, they've all got some kind of nomenclature, but we just used it to tie stuff around like that. You know, it's just it was just something to help you store gear. So it's not the sort of thing you're practicing with or you're doing much with, generally speaking. But when the sheet heats the fan, you'll be real happy you've got that thing. Lots of vehicles have smoke grenade launchers, but Armored Warfare has restricted what, who's allowed to get a module to do so for game balance reasons. It may also be a performance issue. How many tanks do they want blowing or popping smoke in the game? I'm not sure how that works performance-wise, but... I'm showing the Marine Corps logo here because in 2006, the Marine Corps issued a open contract for someone to produce smoke grenades for them. But again, they're not just going to be regular visual uh, smoke grenades. They're going to be the VIRSS type, the ones, the infrared uh, screening smoke. And I thought that was kind of interesting when I read through it to give you an idea for what they're looking for these grenades to do for them. Uh, I'll just read some of it to you that, that I pulled off their, uh, their own, the Marine Corps' website. It says it wants to, one, produce a screen capable of obscuring host vehicle from visual and IR detection. Two, it must generate a screen obscuration time of greater than 30 seconds, visual wavelength, and greater than 20 seconds on the IR wave band. So it's easy. They, they want these each individual grenade to last for 20 to 30 seconds, and when each vehicle launches multiple of these grenades, you can get the feeling for how effective this is going to be in terms of you being able to escape detection. Now, don't get any ideas in your head that you're going to become the supplier to the Marine Corps for these things unless you've got a lot of experience. Because to give you an idea for how many of these grenades the services typically use, you know, the Marine Corps is, is quite small in relation to, say, the Army and their needs for equipment. Uh, the Marine Corps wants the company that uh, wins this contract to produce 160,000 of these. Uh, actually, there were 66 millimeter grenades, uh, specific smoke grenades. 160,000 per year, up to five years. So again, that's the Marine Corps. So you can imagine how many smoke grenades are actually being produced and utilized by the military in any given year. I told you, when I was at NTC, we had hundreds or thousands of them piled up like all the time. So they're, they're super useful. They're not crazy expensive. But because they're used in so many different applications, the numbers of these things in the inventory is just massive. So let's take a look at uh, two tanks that are actually utilizing their smoke grenades. First one's the Leclerc that has just a, a, an incredible amount of smoke grenades available to it. Then the second clip you'll see right after that is for the M1. Nine launch tubes are fitted on either side of the turret roof. The Galix system can launch infrared decoys in anti-personnel or smoke grenades. This system allows the tank to launch its smoke grenades, then retreat to conceal its exact location.
Isn't that cool? And we'll get to play with those things in the game in Armored Warfare. It's going to be awesome. We'll get platoons coordinating all this uh, smoke uh, smoke grenade fire. It's going to be awesome. But, you know, if you really want to make a lot of smoke on the battlefield, uh, there's other ways to do it. Uh, one of the best ways is... Aha! The M56 Coyote. Ever seen this thing? It's uh, attached to a Humvee. It's a, a way to produce an incredible amount of smoke on the battlefield. They'll have, you know, like about six of these things operating in conjunction. There is one active duty unit that has these M56 Coyotes, and it's at the National Training Center. A uh, 1-1 CAV is operating them. Here's one of their vehicles here out at NTC. The Coyote system uses basically like uh, packages or canisters that they can fit on either side of the vehicle. And it can do a, a number of different type of smoke deployments. One's for just visual, one for visual and infrared. And then also this thing I talked about in the beginning with the millimeter wave radar jamming type smoke. Tanks and ships and uh, other Vehicles like that are starting to use this millimeter wave radar as a way to also look at a different high frequency wavelength to acquire targets, reduce foliage, uh, things that are obscured, you know, beyond what we've been doing with the traditional thermal sites. So basically, smoke countermeasures are being designed to help uh, avoid detection for those type of targeting systems. You know, for armored warfare, we are going to be supposedly getting some uh, specialty artillery rounds that will either be for uh, smoke missions or that allow you to do obscuration. Uh, but wouldn't it be great if we had a coyote in the game where you literally your whole job is to run around and create smoke all over the battlefield? I think that would be awesome. Sign me up. I'm not sure how all these uh, grenades and smoke is going to be implemented in the game moving forward. We are very early on the game. They've got a lot of room to roam when it comes to tactical fun the players can have with the smoke. You can see tanks here also are capable of doing it, not just scouts and recon guys. But smoke really is a huge force multiplier that's underestimated. So we should have a lot of fun with these in the game uh, moving forward. Thank you again for watching Let's Play Armored Warfare. My name is Musashi, and if you haven't, Please subscribe and you'll be able to see all the fun as they come out. I'll see you next episode.